Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvrielR32 here, and destroy the ever-living mold, Charmy Boo Boo, staying off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1,500 ladder. Thank you all so much for all the love and support. So I wanted to do a bit of a different video today. I know that I normally do this for structure decks where I say, do not buy such and such structure deck, but now I want to ask the question, should we not buy Rage of the Abyss? Is Rage of the Abyss that bad or is it even that good enough of a set to warrant buying a box or packs or cases whatever the case may be no pun intended there i realized what i just said um but i wanted to really dig into rage of the abyss here because for those of you who maybe you just play more casually or maybe you want to play competitive and you you watch people on youtube whatever the case may be if you've noticed in this format we've been sort of in a calm before the storm session with this brand new format because as much healthier as i would argue this format is um this is still the calm before the storm or the calm before the rage of the abyss because rage of the abyss really changes the format and just the entire landscape of it between the new Mermel Atlantean support that you know everybody in their mama is going to be playing especially here in my local area Jacksonville Florida where back in Dragon Ruler 2013 format and even 2012 everybody was playing Mermel I remember one person in particular said people will play water decks until their privates fall off I'll say it that way so I don't get demonetized off of YouTube <laughs> But they will play water decks until their privates fall off. And sure enough, people played water decks, at least here in Jacksonville, Florida, until their privates fell off. It was actually pretty crazy how long people played Mermel decks. Even just like water decks in general. For whatever reason, it seems like the Yu-Gi-Oh! player base loves water decks. And I don't know why. Uh, I've never been a fan of like Mermel or anything like that. Maybe that's just me. But even with... Uh, archetypal uh, legacy support. I was trying to think of the right word, but uh, with legacy support such as like Six Samurai, which I think is kind of underlooked. I mean, I'm no Six Samurai expert. I haven't played the deck since it was originally Tier 1 many years ago, um, but I think it's a little bit better now. The Six Samurai experts are going to have to let me know down in the comments, but I would feel like that this new legacy support would at least help them a little bit, maybe make them like rogue tier or tier 2 at best, you know, to at least kind of give them the chance to play in 2024 to where they don't just, you know, die by one hand trap or the only way you could do good, which is how everybody in my area joked around back in the day is that you got to stack your deck just to be able to make them work like it was that bad. Um, but more than anything, we now have... It, the name got changed, Molcharmi Foiros, aka Molcharmi Foilos, which if you can't tell by the uh, white lettering in the name, it is indeed a secret rare. Now remember this effect is that every time that the opponent special summons a monster or monsters from the deck and or extra deck, you draw a card. Oh, well, Avery, you know, you add plus six to the number of cards in the opponent's field and then you got to randomly put cards back. That shit is literally never going to happen unless, like, you activate double Flawless, which is a thing. I've seen a lot of people talking about how, you know, you can't activate double Flawless, which I don't know why, because the Molcharmy monsters aren't once per turn. They just have the effect that says you can only activate one other Molcharmy monster effect this turn. So if you open up double Flawless... You can activate both. If you open up double Perulia, you can activate both. If you open up one of each Molcharmi, you can activate both, and you're just drawing a card whenever your opponent breathes or farts. Like, it's actually really crazy. I actually did that to a guy the other day at Locals. I activated double Perulia, and I said, let's just see what happens. <laughs> and sure enough, he normal summoned, and I drew two, and then I drew for turn, and I ended up winning because of it. It's really crazy. So... Because of how much the game is going to change, we haven't even gotten into the fucking overpowered Azamina cards that's going to make Snake Eye Azamina tier 1 and just make the Snake Eye cards good all over again. Uh, but is this set actually worth buying? Should you have been saving your money for months on end to get a case of this set? And I think, uh, this is going to sound a bit of a cop-out answer, but I think more for this set than anything, is that it really comes down to... How badly do you need these uh, new cards, whether it's Azamina, Six Samurai, uh, the new Mulcharmy, whatever the case may be? And is the value there to buy a case? You know, if you plan on playing Azamina Snake Eye, you're going to want a core of the entire Azamina 
archetype. Uh, if you are a competitive player, I don't care if you just go to locals, you're going to need Malcharmy Fualos for either your main or your side. Like, if you're not maining it, you're going to be side decking three copies, hence why we're showing the card on screen. But if you're just a casual player, you, you probably don't give a crap, and honestly, you probably hate the release of Fualos because you're like, oh great, every time I summon a card, my opponent's just going to basically be able to max see me, which... Yeah, it's it's rough. The thing is with Fualos, this card's easily going to be over $100. Like, it's it's going to be a new Little Knight because this card is so damn good. As adorable as it looks, and it's actually just really OP. But should you be going out and getting a case for this? When you look at this set competitively, you have the Azamina cards. You have the Water cards. Because remember, we're not just getting Mermel Atlantean support. We're also getting the new Shark cards and things like that. And it seems like that deck's going to be pretty solid. Uh, and the Samurai cards, I think the jury is still out on. Again, I'm no expert. I haven't even looked up combo videos. Like, I'm not even going to bullshit you. I'm not going to put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you. <laughs> like, I don't know nothing about six Samurais. Um, but I'm going to say that the jury's out on that. It may even just be garbage. But when you look at the value, the competitive cards that are in here, you've got Mulcharmy, Azamina, you've got Water. People are going to be playing that like crazy. You've got any sort of uh, TCG exclusive stuff. The Mimigools. Maybe we get some other, you know, one-off TCG exclusive cards like Necroquip, Princess, Aerial, Eater level of stuff. Maybe not as good, but just, you know, the type of one-off cards that are just randomly thrown in. Maybe we get some OCG imports from... I don't know, some random side sets or Shonen Jump promos that they've gotten. So uh, the value from that perspective is sort of there. Now, if you don't care about the Azamina stuff and you just want Fualos, then by all means, you should probably just pick that up on pre-sale if it's under 100 bucks. As for me, I don't know if I really want to get a case of this. You know, the reason why I got a case of Infinite Forbidden was because there really was a lot of good stuff in there. I wanted the White Forest cards. The Millennium cards on paper seemed really good. The Exodia stuff in general, even though it's not the best set, or well, the best archetype rather, even with the new Blue Eyes card coming out, I think the deck is still just for locals. Like, it's pretty garbage. You have to play five fucking bricks. Uh, but the Millennium Monsters themselves being able to be extenders where you can place them in the back row, pay 2k and summon, maybe do Fiendsmith combos, that was really good. You, of course, had the Fiendsmith archetype which we're also getting the Lacrima Scarlet Sorrow monster that I believe has yet to be revealed in uh, Rage of the Abyss. We're getting that new Lacrima monster. But I think that if there's only a couple cards you want out of the set, then yeah, you're not going to get a case. But with how many good things were in Infinite Forbidden, I think it was justified. If you are a hyper-competitive player, you want Mulcharmins, you want Azaminas, you want the water stuff as well, if there are multiple archetypes that you want, and this really goes for any set that has good cards. I'm not talking about like garbage archetypes, like uh, something out of like Ancient Guardians, which is like a side set, right? Uh, I'm talking about like core sets here where you've got a good idea of what pull rates are going to be because they're not short prints and core sets anymore. If you want multiple archetypes that are revealed in this set, then you should absolutely be getting a case. If you just want the Mimi Ghouls, the Mimi Ghouls are going to probably be pretty cheap. I would say just buy a core of that for however much it's going to be. Same thing with Fualos. You get that under 100 bucks. I would say just pick that up. If you're like me, who wants multiple archetypes, usually out of core sets, I think you should get a case. I don't think I'm going to be getting a case, though, because I really don't care about anything in this set other than Fualos and the Azamina cards. And so because of that, I, I really can't say you should be getting a case of this. Me looking at this set, if you're sitting there saying to me, hey, Avery, Sugar Boo Bear, Pimp, what would you be doing if you're sitting there with just money burning a hole in your booty shorts? <laughs> I don't wear booty shorts. That would be weird. <laughs> but uh, you got a hole burning from money. What would you do? I would not invest in this set. I don't think it's got enough of a push to really be worth buying a case, breaking it down, and then selling off the cards and the commons and, and everything else. I just don't see it being there. Unless there's some sort of broken TCG exclusive cards that get dropped in here besides Mimi Ghoul stuff. I just don't see it. With that being said, what I think you should pick up out of this set is three Fualos. I don't care if you're a casual player with a fucking Beaver Warrior deck or you're a hyper-competitive player, you need Fualos. I'm sorry, but you're gonna need it. Whether it's 
$50 or $150, you're going to need a play set. Uh, and then, of course, if you are a competitive player, you're going to want the Azamina cards because the deck's going to be good, unless for whatever reason you want to play the Shark deck or the Water deck because you want to go back to 2013. And if you're the one dude in the room who wants Samurai stuff, uh, good luck making that deck work because I don't think Gateway's at three. Maybe I'm wrong, but no. I, I just I think the jury's out on that. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you picking up Rage of the Abyss? Do you even care about this set? I feel like a lot of people that watch my videos are like, Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is a dying game. It's really bad. And it's like, no, last format was pretty cheeks. But um, no, this 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 format's pretty good. It's just that Rage of the Abyss is going to kind of, it's going to make some people crap all over the floor. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.